the reason how we got together, the three of us to do this session is um, you guys decided to do something impossible. And about two and a half weeks ago, you guys decided you can make an impact in Spain. And you got almost 100 ventilators to hospitals. So thank Great. you guys for, for joining and uh, welcome to, I think this will be the third show of uh, Zavarones in English on my YouTube channel, um, where we try and bring some good values and, and some happiness and meet people from around the world. So for those of you just joining us on our show, my name is Nir Zavar from Israel. My dream was to do 100 talks in a different, as many different countries as I possibly can. Corona happened and I decided why not bring all these amazing people into my house. And uh, today we have Madrid. And for the third show, I thought it would be amazing to do it the three of us. So Fernando and Eduardo, again, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. How are you guys? Uh, Helenir, thank you very much for, for your call. It's a pleasure to be here with you to share with you this 100 uh, talks with 100 uh, cities in the world or part of the world. Um, coming from, from Madrid, uh, my name is Fernando Arencivia. I'm a member of EO as, as you are, an entrepreneur dedicated to IT, um, business intelligence, and, and also artificial intelligence, and also automation. And um, this is 2023 20, of business, more or less. I have a daughter with 18 years old. And I come from Canary Islands. That is an amazing place, and I love the sea. And I'm living now in a fantastic city. The only problem of Madrid is we have no sea here. But well, <laughs> nobody's perfect. I I live about eight minutes walk from the sea, uh, um, so for us that's good. Uh, haven't seen it in a long time, but it's very close. Okay. Eduardo, how are you? Good. Thanks for allowing us into your home remotely. <laughs> um, maybe at some point in the future we can do that in person. And um, I am, my name is Eduardo Fernandez, uh, also EO Madrid member. And um, I have three daughters and they are uh, five years old, two years old and seven months old. And I also have a software company. So, wait, and you, you, you work from home at the moment as well? You're all in quarantine? Yeah, I mostly work from home, but uh, sometimes I go to a, a small office that I have right across uh, the street. Uh, because of the work uh, I've been doing, bringing uh, ventilators, I have all sorts of uh, authorizations to move and to, uh, to move around. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm exempted. So that's... Wait, I'm still I'm still blown away by the quarantine with three small uh, young daughters. Is that like a lot of work? Is that a, a, how is your yeah? But uh, we are we're very fortunate. We've got a big house, and um, our nanny moved in with us, so we're lucky that uh, you know even with all the children. And one of the one of my three children is from my previous marriage, so she's only with us um, twice a month. Twice a month. Yeah, I know so, that. Uh, it's not I think in Israel, divorced parents are, are more happy at the moment than other parents. In, Probably. In yeah, so tell me, what's, what's the weather over there at the moment? Have you guys started to feel summer? Very nice rain. and sunny. We have a, there is, there wow. is a, April, April, there is a lot of rain. Yeah, they say that in, in Spain. And it's, uh, at this moment, it's, it's doing so. Um, at least this week is going to be a rainy, a rainy week. But it's nice in terms of uh, temperature. It's uh, 20, 15, 20 degrees. So, you know, over here, a lot of people are talking about the remote work and the whole concept. And a lot of people are saying it might be a good thing to keep um, if and when the situation goes back. How do you guys find uh, working from home? Do you like it? Don't like it? I've always worked from home um, 
a little bit to an extent, um, one or two days a week. And um, Sundays, uh, I've always done some work from home. So being a software company, we had many people, well, we allowed everyone one day per week. Um, everyone, like no questions asked, you can work from home. And more days um, with approval. So we were already, we were already uh, quite prepared to have people from, work from home. We also have a nice office, as, as you know. So when the quarantine is over, we'll probably go back to the office, but might make it even more flexible for people to, to work from home. Instead of one day, we might make it you know, more days or, or completely flexible, like come if you like or stay home if you want to stay home. Do you think you will still need the same size of an office moving forward? Mm, maybe not, but um, we, will, we will probably grow in the next uh, year or so. So uh, we won't be downsizing. We also invested a little bit in that office. Uh, so even, to, even though we're renting, it's also a really good price and a beautiful office. So we're definitely not moving or downsizing. Yeah. If we were paying more money than maybe, yeah. but, uh, but it's not an expensive office. We got a good deal. So, but by the way, I think uh, two short stories, and, and the first one is in 2018, I went traveling um, 20 cities in Europe in one month. That was a huge mistake. I'll never do that again, even if I would be able to fly. And every day I went to a different city. I met with EO, the Entrepreneurs' Organization, the members, and uh, um, shared a little bit about how to tell a good story, which was a dream of mine to do. And we're still working on a book to collect all the stories and do something amazing in 2020. And uh, the interesting thing was that I did not know Eduardo. I was invited to his office. And I remember I was blown away when I came in. Um, and uh, you hosted me for a couple of hours. And I, re I remember afterwards, we sat on that small porch and had some yep. uh, uh, meat and cheese and, and drank wine. And I remember that the whole experience was just amazing. So first of all, thank you. And I think... It was a very nice uh, session. Uh, um, we, we really liked it. Not only uh, some EO members that joined, but also some of my team members uh, from my company, they really liked it. I, I learned about, about them, actually, things that I didn't know. So yeah, thank you. I'm, 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 first of all, thank you for saying that, especially now in quarantine. That is amazing to hear that someone on the other side of the world likes what you do. I was actually thinking about doing some, some of these things, um, you know, for free with people all over the world just for the fun of it. And uh, the second story I want to say is the reason how we got together, the three of us, to do this session is um, you guys decided to do something impossible. And about two and a half weeks ago, you guys decided you can make an impact in Spain and you got almost 100 ventilators to hospitals. Eduardo, can you run it by us? It was insane to hear it on, on the phone earlier. Yeah, so quick summary. We, um, some people from my EO forum were looking into buying masks uh, 16 days ago. And talking to a um, uh, cousin of mine who is a doctor, he said, hey, masks are nice, but ventilators save lives and we need them today. And through connections from my family in Germany, we found secondhand ventilators. We were able to buy um, first um, 10 that went to a major hospital. They opened a new uh, ICU, a new intensive care unit with 20 beds. And uh, another EO member put up a GoFundMe to raise more money. We raised um, so far 400,000 euros. We've spent half a million uh, to buy um, more than 80. And then other entrepreneurs and other companies have picked up and followed our path to buy about 25, 30 more. So more than 100 total. Um, and mostly the work of uh, EO Madrid members. So I think the fact that entrepreneurs can make a decision, and by the way, I think that goes for every person that listens or watches this video, you can actually decide you make an impact. It could be a small thing like making someone happy, which is kind of what I'm trying to do, or share the knowledge or share the experience. Or so what you guys in Madrid have decided is to make an actual impact within the hospitals. So, yep. and a conversation starts in, in, does it 
at any point does someone say, hey, Eduardo, listen, great idea, but we can't do it? Or are people positive all along the way? Everybody was positive. Everybody was, nobody was saying, hey, we can't do this because nobody was asking whether we can do this. We were just doing it. <laughs> and um, obviously we didn't say, hey, let's bring 100. No, initially it was, let's bring masks. But then asking around, uh, we found 10 secondhand ventilators. And then the next day, the broker offered us another 10. Um, you know, so after 10 days, we had over 100. Um, the money, uh, if you told me, hey, you need to spend half a million, I would be like, no way. But uh, it was more slowly. It was first um, 60K, uh, half put up by other uh, EO members. Uh, so it was more like, you know, people coming in and helping. Then I was interviewed in television a couple of times, in the radio, etc. And, you know, I didn't look for those interviews. It was other EO members trying to help, trying to get the word out, connecting us to, to, to journalists to the ambassador for like uh, helping other in uh, bringing him from other countries. It was yeah, never a question of uh, stories, can we do Eduardo. this? Sorry for cutting you off. Tell us that story. So you got to the ambassador of? Uh, the, uh, the ambassador of, of Spain in Egypt, because we found 40 machines in Egypt and 40 is a lot. So uh, it was all, we were all set. We had an invoice uh, to pay them. Um, someone found us a plane. <laughs> The pilot uh, offered to fly for free, so we only had to pay for the gas. So a plane from Spain to Egypt was only 50K, basically, back and forth, uh, Madrid to Egypt and back, because the pilot just said, hey, I'll go for free, you know? <laughs> so um, it was amazing. And uh, we had everything. We had the plane, uh, the ambassador was, was checking, uh, and the ambassador was basically a former EU member that is still a friend. And uh, he's in touch with a lot of politicians. So in a couple of hours, he, we were on a phone call with the ambassador. And the ambassador said, hey, you know, it's actually late here in Egypt because they are ahead of us. So we got to wait till tomorrow morning to get all the paperwork. I will, go to the, I will go to the Ministry of something in Egypt and I'll let you know. And we were all set. But then in the morning, he called us the ambassador. You know, this is not somebody. This is the ambassador or anybody. Um, and he called us and he said, well, he texted us actually, WhatsApp, I, I've got the screenshots. And he said, uh, hey, don't do it because just yesterday or, or like early this morning, there is a new, um, Egypt is a dictatorship. So, you know, they, they can quickly change things. And they said that they wouldn't allow any, um, any medical equipment leaving the country. So, you know, 40 respirators, 40 ventilators is... Um, it was going to be uh, almost a million euros, I think, uh, because they were actually semi new. And, and we chose not to do it because the risk of the plane not being able to fly out was too high. Wow. I mean, it was too high. It was supposed to be illegal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. yeah. Well, so I think uh, you, you said, um, correct me if I'm wrong, that when you guys were talking about how to get this done, um, you were talking to your wife and she said, well, maybe my dad can help. So your father-in-law knows some people in another country through his former work and so on and so forth. Am I correct? Yeah, uh, uh, my father-in-law, my wife is uh, German. Uh, so is my father-in-law. So he connected us to uh, brokers in Germany. Germany uh, has the most uh, intensive care beds per million people in the world, they, 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 their hospitals are top notch and they've got many um, intensive care units. And also the biggest um, producers, the biggest companies that produce ventilators are German. So they've got a surplus. So it, 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 they, it's hard to buy new because the whole world is trying to buy ventilators. But there are many warehouses and many places where there are old ventilators that they don't want because they've got top of the line equipment. And the old ventilators, uh, they're very good. Uh, German engineering is, is really good, so they work perfectly. By the way, you, you know, from all this conversation, the fact of how we guys, uh, the three of us, we're talking, and how um, your wife spoke to her dad, which knew someone, how you guys know, or how you reach the ambassador. And if you can take something out of this, is, is one, nothing can stop you if you make a decision which apparently you guys were able to do something that a government, your government, took longer and, and some, yep. uh, some big uh, enterprises were struggling. And it wasn't a matter of money for them, right? It was just 
yeah. effort, being able effort to and um, will, like, you know, will, yeah. the will to yeah. do this. Amazing. Well, Amazing. One step after the other, but it's, it was pretty important also, because at the very beginning, it, it started small, but uh, it was growing, growing, and okay, let's, uh, let's it grow. Yeah, often, I mean, a hundred sounds uh, impressive. It is impressive. Uh, but at the beginning, it was only 10. You know, it was actually going to be 15. And we lost uh, part of the deal because somebody moved faster and got five. So instead of 15, we, we did 10. But those 10, it's not that many, um, made such a big impact um, that we were like, you know, let's buy more, right? And we were already a little disappointed that we had lost five on the way. So we started moving even faster. I started advancing the money myself. I gave the broker an advance so that he could buy with just a WhatsApp message. You know, we started like making changes on the go. Started smaller, but every day and every day more people helping um, made us a very, very good team and very, very fast. So I think, so the second thing I hear about the conversation, how things are moving is the network and how it is important to keep the network, not for the sake of the network, but to keep it because these are the people you meet along the way. Um, same as you and I met uh, um, briefly for a couple of hours and same as uh, Fernando reached out and we said, yeah, we have to do it. And same goes for a lot of these things where um, yep. keep your network and don't keep it for the sake of business or money. Just keep it because it's people you appreciate or people you, you want to work with, you like them and you never know when in life you might need them, especially these times. When, uh, yep. um they will do that for you because they know why you kept in touch. And, and you know, yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh, to me, it was the biggest takeaway that um, if I need to do something big in the future, I've got some amazing people that I can rely on um, and seeing how they reacted in this situation um, is awesome. Not, and obviously, you know, my, my EU Madrid um, colleagues uh, the, and my, and my forum mates, their reaction, you know, seeing them, how they work in a crisis and how we work together. And, uh, you know, some of us have pretty strong personalities, but uh, I, I, I think it's actually two lessons. One, uh, you're absolutely right. Um, keeping in touch with, this, with these people, even former EU members that left, you know, keep in touch because there's some amazing, there's some amazing people out there, right? But then also the power of... Um, of a powerful mission, right? When you're trying to do something that is clearly extremely important, extremely urgent, that there is no doubt that uh, that is an important mission. And in this case, okay, you know, saving people lives is, is a pretty obvious and important mission, right? But there can be, there can be others in the future, you know, companies, you, you are able to hire the best people if you've got a, a powerful mission, right? And good people. So that's what happened here. We had a powerful mission, let's save some, some lives. And, and some amazing people uh, through the network, basically. And very yeah. quickly, very qu quickly, we got together and we made a big impact. So for me, those are two huge lessons. That, that is amazing. Wait, I, I'll just put the light on and I'll be back just a second because I'm, I'm sitting in the dark and it doesn't, well, just a second. Yeah. Oh. So... Yeah, that that was weird. I didn't want to. I didn't want to stop you guys talking. And just darkness falls on this call. Um, so yeah. So if uh, you know, um, I want to ask you something. You guys approved the money on a WhatsApp call or a WhatsApp text and and stuff. Message, sorry, and and stuff like that. But then, how do you deal with uncertainty? You don't know the people on the other side. You don't know. Um, the situation in Madrid. You don't know if you will be able to fly that plane. So that goes back to being a, a businessman, an entrepreneur, a family man, whatever. But at the moment on this planet, 99% of the people are dealing with a lot of uncertainty. How do you make a decision when there's so many unknowns? So, well, do you, do you, I mean, I, I think all of us that, that are running businesses are used to dealing with a level of uncertainty, right? So, you know, there's like a risk versus reward um, scale. 
and I will always take some risks if the reward is, is, is big, right? And I will take more risks. I don't think, um, I don't think entrepreneurs are like super, like we love risk. No, I, I love the opposite. I love a lot of reward for very little risk, right? But, um, but at the beginning, um, it wasn't so much risk. We were looking into uh, buying 10. It was 56,000 euros. Um, we, a few of us got together, so none, none of us was spending more than 25, roughly. Uh, thousand euros and then the contact came through a trusted source um, there were still some unknowns like for example you know were the machines were they in good shape or not there was no time to really do a thorough check on the machines um, are the machines going to break in transit things like that right so you know uh, we were all trying to diminish uh, every risk I was trying to have the broker take a look at the machines we were trying to talk to uh, Iberia the, the airline so that they would be um, taken care of but there's always going to be some risk at the end of the day, also, you know, talking to the hospital, they were like, you know, just bring whatever you can. If they come in not such good shape, it's okay, you try it. It was a donation. They were not going to complain so much. Um, so the risk, the worst case scenario is that we bring 10 faulty machines and we lose some money. You know, um, I think that was a totally acceptable risk compared to the potential reward. In the end, out of the 10, I believe they couldn't make one of them work. Uh, I know that within 24 hours, eight were working, two were not working, and I believe they fixed one, but they couldn't fix the other one. So, you know, not, not all of them worked, but obviously, you know, having eight work almost immediately and one more work after some some reparations uh, is an amazing result, um, especially because every machine can, every machine saves, saves one or two lives. intubated with uh, with the same machine right yeah um so yeah you know once we did 10 we also could trust the broker more and uh soon after you know the next shipment that's when we decided to give the guy a budget and, and advance the money because we could see that the guy was very trustworthy so mm. you know you just go slowly it's like almost every business right and normally you don't start with like 20 million euros and you know like some big bet you start more at least your members will typically start a little smaller i think and then grow. Yeah. By the way, I think there'll be a lot of startups who did get 20 million and they'll be gone by the end of this crisis. And uh, I, think, I think that will create a lot of opportunity for the smaller guys to, to scale yeah. again and, and do stuff. And um, so what, what do you miss at the moment? The new, what do Sorry. you guys miss when we look at... Uh, so we have a new kind of life at the moment from masks to yes. lack of restaurants staying at home one thing you I guys let fernando take that one. what i let fernando take that one well about, uh, talking to the, in, in terms of uh, I, I i hear you a little bit bad but i i understand that you are talking about equipment but the part of equipment we are trying to to get no no or so? no, no i'm question? asking on a, on a on a personal level what do okay. you what do you miss uh, seeing that we don't have our old life at the moment? Restaurants. No. Restaurants. <laughs> well, human touch is pretty important. Uh, for me, for example, is is to see my daughter is is the, the main point in my case, and uh, to normally to to be with the people in the same room to. Take a look. You, you, it's, it's something extremely important to take a beer with somebody, to to listen to other people near there and appreciate the feelings. And, and human touch is, is pretty important. And um, especially for you that are alone in your, your, your home yeah. now, maybe for you it's the same thing. Uh, probably is it the worst part of the quarantine. Yeah, I, I, I posted on Instagram, I think, uh, two days ago that I've, I've gone 30 days without a hug. So I'm, I'm single. I don't have a family. Um, I don't know. Um, this, this probably will go live in a couple of days. So um, in, in this week, it's uh, Passover, the Jewish Passover. And we always do it with the big family and, and all, a lot of people. And then we go out and... So it's kind of weird to do it alone at home today. Um, definitely strange. But I, I signed up for a weird webinar to pass the time. So, and I have to tell you, uh, I own, uh, I'm, I'm a partner in two bars in Tel Aviv. 
So I like going out. I like meeting people. I like drinking. A lot of my work is, is social. Um, I have a, a, a marketing agency. So now when we lost clients and, and the businesses, like everybody else, being hit quite hard, usually if we have a problem in the business, I go out, I give, I do a hundred calls, meet as many people as I can and I fix it. But now you don't know who to call and there's no, let's have coffee. So yeah, definitely interesting. And again, hearing you guys tell that story of the impact you can make out of your own homes and, and save lives and, and move uh, things from different countries and everything. Um, to me on a personal level is very inspiring. So, and, and it's a okay. different way of connecting and, and hearing you guys connect um, as a forum for people who don't know. And we, we stated this a couple of times forum is within EO. We have a group of people where we're accountable. We take care. We sometimes call it the board of directors of our lives. And in these times, a lot of us as entrepreneurs need to rely on one another and good things come out of it. And uh, so just, Hearing you guys uh, um, do this, and, and you know, so what is your daily routine now? You guys go to, to, you wake up in the morning, you go to the office at the same time, your new home office, or is it, how do you guys do it? Yes, more or less, trying to, to keep more or less the same, same time scheduling that normally. Wake up, take breakfast, then go to work a little bit. I'm not moving from my home. It's not like Eduardo that is uh, going to the office and so, it's nice. But uh, I think that uh, more or less everybody at the beginning was a little bit weird. We are doing more or less a, a normal scheduling and trying to remember how to play guitar or to cook. <laughs> so how is, kind of... how is your guitar playing at the moment? Is it good? Yeah, it's, it's a great moment. <laughs> <laughs> and Eduardo, you, what time do you start work in, in Spain? Um, I keep flexible hours. I, um... I, I don't have a set time where I start. I start working after I eat breakfast, basically. <laughs> um, what I'm doing right now is um, uh, I am going to um, a small office, a small co-working space that is uh, literally one minute away from my house um, because uh, we've got uh, many children and, and, and a nanny at home. It's sometimes not so easy to work from there. So I come to this uh, co-working. Um, it's empty. It's been empty for weeks, and and they give me permission to come, and and it's nice because I can really focus. It's, it's a little harder at, at home. And and usually staff would start at what time? Usually, like we we've never have a our company. We're we're a software company, and we we've never had a schedule um, or like hours uh, work hours. Uh, the only most of the team uh, must join a meeting. Uh, it's called a stand-up meeting because they have to stand up. It's pretty pretty quick. And that's every day. There's two teams, one at 10.30 a.m., another one at 11. Um, but, um, but that's it. Then they can organize the rest of the day how they wish. That's very interesting. We, we, start, we still try and start our schedules around 9, 9.30. Startups uh, usually start a bit later. But people are trying to keep some sort of a, of a routine. So I think that is important. Are you guys keeping your uh, uh, alcohol in check? Still uh, uh, drinking regularly? Is wine part of your menu? In my case, uh, we normally share wine uh, at dinner. Yeah, so, you know, I, uh, when people ask me, uh, why do you own a bar? I usually say it's not for the money or the profit. It's because I have a drinking problem and um, I haven't had a drink in a month. So uh, I, I'm losing weight just from that. So definitely miss having a beer with my friends. So, you know, a lot of people uh, talk about the situation being bad and maybe you need to understand that you're getting lemons and what is the lemonade you need to make out of it? What is the good that might come out of it? Um, do you guys have anything to share about how you guys think of that? What could be the lemonade um, for people, for young entrepreneurs or for young students or for people looking for a job now? Yeah, 
Young people is, is uh, for you, Eduardo. I don't remember. I actually, I actually, it's a good question. Um, I've been thinking about it. I even, um, I even prepared some money to invest, you know, just in case the stock market goes down. And, and I've been thinking about how some of our products can be adapted to this new situation. But honestly, I haven't really had a chance to do any of that because the last uh, 15 days of my life have been completely dedicated to this uh, ventilator project. Um, I'm now starting to emerge and go back to regular life and I'm first catching up on my, my business and, and my family. <laughs> so I actually don't know and I'm really curious about what you guys say because uh, to me it's like I'm starting to read the news to see what the government is doing for companies like loans and things like that because I've, I've just been completely dedicated to finding and, and transporting these ventilators. Yeah, so that's, it's a good that's... question. That's interesting. Fernando, how do you look at it when, when you come out of a crisis? What could be the lemonade? Well, um, what I'm trying now is these days that we are with a lot of, theoretically, we have a lot of time with ourselves, is to, to reconstruct or rethink about uh, the right way to face problems or your mainly how to productive, more uh, capable. And um, I have uh, remembered that uh, focus is extremely important. And uh, in our days, especially these days, <laughs> it's extremely easy to have interruptions, not only from the others, also from you, because mm -hmm. one thing is more interesting than the other, so you are just jumping from a point to another. And your ability, after five hours, with the phone, the computer, the TV, or whatever, uh, you have done nothing and have a lot of unuseful information accumulated. So it's extremely important to focus on what do you want to do and to have uh, the right, uh, I don't know the name in English, discipline, the right- um, Discipline. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. To, be, to be able to, to force yourself to, to do anything useful each day in terms of knowledge, in terms of, uh, of uh, tasks done. And this is more or less uh, where I'm focused. From a point of view, this is uh, something that's going to change a lot. When we go out <laughs> of, this, of this situation, um, things are going to change. Uh, hearing Eduardo, I totally agree with, the, for example, in companies, flexibility is going to be increased for sure because it works. And, um, and also, uh, the, the use that we are doing in the digitalization is uh, extremely important. In terms of uh, Eduardo and, and you and me are people coming from IT. And uh, there is now uh, something uh, funny and, and you can find this. What have helped you more to your organization in, uh, transfer, in digital transformation? You can say the CEO, the CIO, coronavirus, coronavirus. Because, yeah, yeah. uh, of course, without, without uh, this, uh, a lot of things are still like always. Yeah. But uh, now it's changing and the situation is uh, evolving. And also the behavior of the people is, is changing. So let's see what's going to happen. But it's going to be pretty funny to see how the people is evolving. I agree. I think... Well, 30 days at home when I'm, I'm a person who's never at home I barely sleep I'm always out I'm always doing something I'm always at work and now suddenly when you took away my work you took away my, my friends and you took away everything and you put me in a cage and you told me listen figure shit out and, and try and find yourself I'm finding that the lemonade might be for me dealing with my own mind with my own fears, with my own abilities, with doing this. And, and uh, um, I'm, I'm now filming and I hate being filmed and I'm holding camera the whole day and I'm getting used to it. And uh, it's about me making a decision not to watch the news on a daily basis. It's about me deciding not to look at Instagram every five minutes. Um, it's about having this call when I'm fully dressed with shoes because this is something I consider important to me. And I want to respect the people on the other side and the fact that 
in my mind, I know that that's what's happening. It was important. But again, I hope everybody finds their lemonade. Fernando, Eduardo, I want to say a huge, huge thank you for you guys, for your time. I know how busy you guys are. This has been so inspiring. Um, last words, guys? Thanks to you, Mir, for your call. It's been a very nice opportunity to talk our story here. And uh, I'm here. we are here in Madrid waiting for you, man. Come here. Amazing, amazing. amazing. So I'm, I'm here in Israel. I'm here in Israel. Can't wait for you guys to come out, come for a drink. And if you guys need anything, I'm here. Um, to the audience, thank you so much if you stuck all the way till the end. Um, hope you enjoyed this episode with our friends in Madrid doing amazing, amazing things to help uh, humanity and save people's lives. Guys, see you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nir. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.